This is Next Radio. With Broadcast Bionics. Innovative solutions for creative people. Hello, and thank you, everyone. Uh, not least because uh, to be able to speak to an audience of radio professionals gives me a chance to confess to one of my most atrocious management decisions um, to an audience who will understand. Um, in 1997, I was running Capital Radio Group's websites, and I hired a new young female designer straight off the plane from South Africa. Uh, she was a bit stuck for somewhere to stay uh, in London, so I arranged to have her stay at Capital Radio's flat. They had a flat. Um, I knew that she would be sharing a flat uh, with a young uh, early breakfast DJ that Capital had just hired. Um, uh, he'd just come down from Leeds. Um, his name was Chris Moyles. Um, I think she's just about forgiven me now. <laughs> um, anyway, government. <laughs> Easier than Chris Moyles. Um, I'm the Deputy Director of the Government Digital Service. Uh, we're relatively new, we're three and a bit years old. Bit of government that helps government transform to respond to the digital revolution in society. We're a few hundred people strong now, we're pretty big. We are developers, designers, researchers, content designers, policy people, uh, transforming government. I think what we do is slightly different from, what we actually do is somewhat different to what people think we do. We're not here to do that. Okay. We're here to do that. Much bigger deal, much bigger ask. Okay. I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, trying to explain how in doing gov.uk, uh, which is the government's new single, hopefully better, website, uh, we are starting, slowly starting to change government to take the opportunity of digital and to respond to the threat of digital. My thesis is that you need things like this. Okay. I am watching you, listening to your responses carefully. We'll come back to this at the end. This is my dream. Just sort it all out for me. And the way you change institutions, be they commercial institutions, be they government institutions, is you change the language they use. You help them change themselves by changing the narrative internally, literally changing the words people use. Let me explain how that worked on gov.uk. So why did we do gov.uk? This was 2011. Uh, it was pretty clear one of the first things that government needed to do was fix its publishing online. Which is possibly not the most important thing. Transactions are more important, arguably. Uh, but it felt like a good place to start. There were hundreds of government websites. The only thing they had in common was that they were all different, and they cost about £100 million pounds more than they should have done, just to publish. So one objective was to make a simpler, clearer, faster, single website for government. The second objective in doing gov.uk was actually more important, it was to show government that there was another way of doing service design, service development, a better way, and to show them it, not tell them it. Okay, we'll come back a lot more to that. That's the core of my hypothesis, show, don't tell. So is gov.uk simpler, clearer, faster? Well, uh, it won Design of the Year 2013, it was the first website to win. It's the first government thing to win. Uh, we would have had the Prime Minister accept the award, but Mrs Thatcher died. Um, we won a black pencil. There were two, there's a black pencil in the office from DNAD that no one in the office knows what it is. I love that. There's a piece of plastic pencil sat there. Um, but none of those, I don't really care about either of those. What I really care about is the fact that I can see every day from the numbers, the quantitative and the qualitative feedback we get from all the user research we've done, that actually, compared to what went before from DirectGov, BusinessLink, there are many, many, many hundreds of government websites, gov.uk is simpler, clearer, and faster for people who really need it. It's also a lot cheaper, but that's secondary. But that's enough about saying why well, gov.uk is great, because that's not the most interesting thing by a long margin. What I think is more interesting and more challenging is helping how, how to use the fact of doing something, making something, to help an organization understand how to change, how to change what it does and how to change the language with which it describes itself, the stories it tells itself. 
We are obsessive in GDS about talking about user needs. We don't talk about specifications, we don't talk about requirements, none of that. We don't talk about procurement, we talk about users and the needs they have. They may not know they have them, uh, but we talk about user need. And you go around government now and people are talking about user needs. If you go into our office in Hoban, which overlooks Hoban Station, there's something very <laughs> symbolic there, a big piece of paper with a bit ripped out saying, we're doing it for them, they're the users. The government is not the user. People outside, real people are the users. As well as talking about user needs, we talk a lot about multidisciplinary teams. The way you do great things in the digital space is by hiring brilliant people, not many, from a multiplicity of disciplines, give them the space, literally the physical and the creative space, to do great work. Okay? It's two of my favorite developers going into Downing Street, Maz and Dai. It delights me that I can take people like that into Downing Street, and they are now appreciated a little bit more anyway, because they're going to change government, not some dude in a suit and tie. Start small, iterate, then iterate again. Very counterintuitive to many in government that the right way to do this is to start really small and then iterate, iterate, iterate. Let me go through the gov.uk story with that in mind. Very first thing we did before we wrote a business case, before I even got official money or anything really, was build an alpha. A team of 10 people, 10 weeks, 247,000 pounds, your money, by the way. Build an alpha to sketch the edges of what's possible, to show that something exciting was possible quickly. Show momentum. Okay, and get it in front of real users, and get it in front of real user testing. But it's really there to show that you can get started quickly and learn stuff. Show the edges of it, almost like put the corners in the jigsaw. Six months later, we'd done a beta. We got enough permission to do a beta. And the beta was pretty much done. Pretty much a, a, a parallel live running site. It had a thing on the bottom saying, here be dragons. None of this is official yet. Uh, but from uh, a beta in 10 weeks, literally six and a bit months, uh, from an alpha in 10 weeks, literally six and a bit months later, we had a beta. There were two teams operating at this point. We were about 60 people. 1.6 million pounds to build the beta. All in the public, by the way, doing it in the open. October 2012, we turned off. Or actually, we redirected all the URLs, all the URLs from DirectGov and all the URLs from BusinessLink uh, and launched gov.uk. Actually, all we did when we launched was turn those redirects on. It was already there. People just didn't know it was there. Didn't do any marketing. Didn't need to. Google is the homepage. We optimized for Google. And this is what it looks like now after many, many, many changes. We do literally hundreds of content changes uh, every week the vast majority of which are in response to data from our users about what they're not understanding. We do 10 software releases a day. We have 10 software release slots a day. Uh, and if your organization can't do 10 software releases a day and the government can, well, then the problem's with your organization, I suggest. You should be able to do that. Um, interestingly, the people who helped us, one of the people who helped us do this had previously worked at Global Radio. Um, so, talent is there. Do less. That really is counterintuitive to government. Absolutely essential. People are so confused. Doing, people want to do more, 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 more stuff online. Do less. This guy is one of my favorite designers in the world. Guy Morehouse. Please don't hire him. He's ours. Um, he spent uh, weeks of his, a lot of his own time designing icons to help people orientate themselves on gov.uk. He put so much love and passion and creativity into those. He wanted it to reflect uniquely Britain. He took Festival of Britain uh, as his... Uh, inspiration, and he, he produced this lovely set of iconography. He then did some user research. On, did they help people orientate themselves? And you know what, they didn't. They didn't. So he went back and he himself changed the code on the site to remove them all. And then he wrote a blog post about why he'd remove them all. That is the kind of culture and behaviors that I mean when I say do less. It's a huge cultural shift to be brave enough and strong enough to take stuff away. Because only by taking stuff away will you give the clarity and simplicity that people need. Make things open, it makes things better. Now, it's easy for government to say this, actually, because you pay for us. Okay? So, of course, you should be able to benefit from the code we write, what we're learning, what we're thinking. You should be able to contribute and argue and tussle with us and share the benefits of the good stuff we're doing, and hopefully improve some of the bad bits. Nearly all of our code is open source. Nearly all of it is on GitHub. 
Uh, and the day we launched gov.uk, we had two people improve code. Actually, we actually made a mistake with bank holidays, and someone picked it up and fixed it, uh, and we were able to integrate it that same day. Um, if I'm honest, the best thing about being open, uh, it's a brilliant way to recruit talented people, because they can see what you're doing. Uh, it's turned out to be a fantastic recruitment strategy, and I'm glad we stumbled across it by accident. Um, live your principles. Okay. I spent seven long years at the BBC uh, doing all sorts of internet stuff. Uh, one of the final things I did, more in anger than joy, if I'm honest, was, was get the executive board of the BBC to sign off a bunch of web principles. Okay. Uh, these, are the, these are the principles by which our, the BBC's website is going to thrive. I was never brave enough to then win the argument to actually put those principles live in the open for the whole world to see them. Okay. Didn't make that mistake again with gov.uk. One of the first things we've done, we did, was write down the principles by which we are going to design these services with quite a lot of detail behind them and live them. And these in particular have proved brilliant as little mimetic uh, little phrases that you can hear across bits of government now. You know you're winning when you hear people say, we need to iterate and then iterate again. And we need to do the hard work to make it simple. We need to just do less. We don't need to be uniform, but we do need to be consistent. It is propaganda. Okay? There's nothing sophisticated about this. But you change the language people use, you literally change what, the way they think, the story they tell themselves, and what they do. Go and have a look. And then this is something I've learned, this wasn't my idea, but it's turned out to be brilliant in the context of the civil service, which is the civil service loves to be obedient. It's very hierarchical. You wear your tie. I was told off today, I met the chancellor this morning, and I wasn't wearing a tie. This was apparently bad, uh, because it showed that I was lower down in the hierarchy. What a load of old bollocks. Excuse my French, <laughs> but that's the, kind of that's the kind of culture uh, we're trying to change. And one of the ways to change a culture is just to have the balls to write down a new manual. This is how we're going to work. It's like this. And if you make it good, as in well-written, well well-designed, coherent, cogent, easy to use, you'll find all sorts of people following the new normal, the new rules. So if you claim the right to be the new normal, uh, you do become the new normal. And we invested uh, a lot of effort into this. Two things here, actually. One is the service design manual, which is literally on gov.uk slash service manual. Hundreds and hundreds of pages, some of it well-written, others written. Uh, describing how we work, who you should hire, what the process is, how you do user research, all the different ways you can do it, how you write, what's a style guide like, how do you measure, how do you design with data, how do you do the hardware to make it simple, how you do DevOps, how you decide what to release open source, how you do tech, I could go on for days about what's in the design manual. And I know in government context, people are using it because it looks official. And it is official, we've had it mandated by ministers, but that's kind of secondary to putting the effort in to, to uh, uh, make it be good. The second thing about becoming the new normal is to set a standard. And if you go on that service manual site, you'll see the digital by default service standard, which is a set of 26 rules by which government services now have to live by before they're allowed to go live. In fact, before they're allowed to go from alpha to beta or beta to live. Um, they're a pretty good set. They're a lot about how you work as well as what you build. Right. The most important thing of all. Um, government has 29,000 people in it. Whitehall, just over there, has 29,000 people in it whose job it is to write policy. Okay. They are the dominant caste in government. Okay. I remember being in the BBC when Greg Dyke joined. And about, after, about eight months after he joined, I went to a presentation of some stupid management team or senior management team or whatever. There's about 250 BBC senior managers in the room. Uh, and Greg Dyke presented this anthropologist, a woman who'd spent eight months wandering around the BBC with carte blanche to talk to anybody. Uh, and she was a social anthropologist. She was amazing. And she spent 20 minutes describing the real hierarchy of the BBC, okay, the real caste system. So obviously right at the top is not the director general. It's Jeremy Clarkson, Jonathan Ross is the talent. They're the most powerful people. The second most powerful people, people who are close to that talent. Third most powerful, controllers. DG was about sixth most powerful. Okay. 
and, 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 all the way down. Okay. Government also has a hierarchy. It's very strict, strictly enforced, hence the comment about my tie earlier. That was an act of aggression by a dominant caste. Okay. The way you change that is by doing something that caste, and they need to change. They, need, they know they need to change, to be fair. They really know they need to change. The way you change that dominant caste and help them embrace more castes is by making things and getting excited and making things. Okay. Being real. Don't tell them. Show them. And I will know when governments really started to change to embrace this stuff. When I show them this thing, I show my fellow civil servants this thing, and they don't laugh. Okay. And they don't laugh. They laugh in despair, most of them. They'd love to do this. Okay. I know we've really changed government when you don't laugh, when you see that. Because we really should be able to do that with the digital revolution. Thank you very much. This is Next Radio. With broadcast Bionics, innovative solutions for creative people.